anytime. All right, and we are live on bourbonblog.com live, uh, continuing to celebrate Bourbon Heritage Month, uh, National Bourbon Heritage Month. I'm here with my good friend, Brian Nolt, founder and CEO of Breckenridge Distillery. How's it going, Brian? Good, man. How are you? Good, good. And uh, so some really big news the last few weeks for you all. The new uh, the new sponsor, well, the new bourbon for uh, yep. uh, for Denver Broncos is indeed Breckenridge Bourbon. This is the first time they've ever had a bourbon, like their own bourbon, right? Yeah, this is the first year the NFL was allowing spirits. So, you know, we're always, yeah, we're always last nice. in everything. So, <laughs> but yeah, now we can... Uh, now we can sponsor, sponsor uh, or do sponsorships with NFL teams, so that's pretty cool. That is amazing. Are you all the first ever uh, bourbon of an NFL? I mean, is this probably? You... Yeah, I, I mean, I'm assume... trying to think of any other NFL teams that have done this. You're the first. Yeah, I bet you a bunch of people are going to scramble and try to try to do it now because it just, um, you know, they they got word that uh, they were going to be allowed to do it, and so they. Um, gave us a call and they said, Hey, we're going to be able to do this. Would you guys be willing to, you know, partner up? And I said, yeah, absolutely. That'd be pretty awesome if we could make it work. So, you know, that's amazing. So, so walk us through. So what, they reached out to you. They love the idea. What, how did it all unfold? Yeah. I mean, they just, uh, they were, they were interested in doing, doing the partnership and, um, you know, they're obviously, um, the biggest sports franchise in Colorado and um, Colorado people are very rabid about the Broncos. You know, there's some fan bases that are just really, really into their teams, you know, Seattle, Denver, um, you know, um, even the Browns, uh, Kansas city, you know, the people are just, they live and die by the success of the team. And, you know, we're the largest distillery in Colorado. And so, it, you know, it was worth talking. And then um, they were really flexible on what they'd allow us to do. So, you know, I said, hey, you want to have some fun with it and do uh, bring in some alums and blend whiskey together with those guys and some, you know, cheerleaders and different people like that, super fans, and <laughs> maybe do like a head to head and uh, talk a lot of smack on, um, you know, um, on one blend versus the other and see which one people like. And they were like, heck yeah, man, let's do it. So that's amazing. <laughs> That's how so, what you, so what you did was you came up with two blends, which uh, we have right here. And again, yep. uh, for all we know, and it seems like uh, we would know the history of the NFL with this. The this is the first ever bourbon to be an official bourbon of an NFL team, uh, partly because of some regulations that were just yeah. applied to all NFL. How did that? What is that? Yeah. Apply? Yep, that's right. So um, I think NFL didn't allow any. Um, alcohol sponsorships and then you know a year or two ago they allowed like wine and or beer and uh, then this year they find them that seemed to go well so i think they finally said okay well let's see how spirits goes and um you know it's all the the rules are all weird so like if you're an nfl player an active player you know you cannot you can get all kinds of sponsorships that you want but for some reason right. you can't do alcohol like okay <laughs> you know but that's the way it is so uh whatever man it's you know those are the rules and that's just where we live is in a world of rules so if you're, if you're an individual uh like the players can get sponsorships but they the players themselves still can't get that yeah they still can't but they said that the teams last year beer and wine's good this year spirits are good i think so yeah yeah so that's pretty cool so so you bring these uh these retired play you had some retired players cheerleaders I know we yep. posted some photos on Bourbon Blog, and you did two different blends. I have both of these, by the way, right here. It's the blue blend and the orange blend. You call it the um, the champions blends. Uh, yep. What did you do? Who, first of all, who any, any names we would know that came? There anybody that? Um, uh, what, yeah, what I mean, else? yeah. If you're a Broncos fan, for sure. I think most people know Jake Plummer. Yeah, he was quarterback yep. for. Um, several years and uh jake jake was on my team and uh, reggie rivers was a running back uh, they didn't play at the same time but reggie's uh he's um really big here locally so he's um does a lot you know locally and um uh he's he's a really good shit talker too so it was good <laughs> to get him in there <laughs> jake jake is like uh, very um he's just super mellow and you know just uh, really easy going um 
so it was kind of funny, you know, seeing those two um, talk smack. So it was once shit got going, he had good comebacks, you know. <laughs> and you had <laughs> right, and you had current cheerleaders, or or um, they were uh, they were the former cheerleaders, former cheerleaders. Yeah, they were cheering on the teams back and forth. So what did you blend? You you were which team were you on? The blue or the orange? I did the orange. Yeah, so Jake orange. and I did orange, and uh, Hans and Reggie did the blue. All right, so these are both really delicious. I've been I've been tasting them back and forth a little bit the last few days. And first of all, for people that are obviously fans of the Broncos uh, and Breckenridge, where can they find these? Where these are these? This is really good stuff and beautiful. Yeah, animals. it's it's Colorado only, so that's another um, NFL rule. Um, right. So uh, there, we could get it into some other markets that don't have NFL teams technically, but that's super difficult to do. So. Um, it's just Colorado only, and um, you know we're, I think we're gonna do um, at least for now. It's uh, we're doing at least three years in a row of these. So next year we'll bring in um, some other folks and learn from this one, and then get another series out. And um, each year do some you know some changes, and um, you know these are like really good whiskeys, and the whole experience is a lot of fun too. So. Um, I'm just anxious to see uh, what people do. I, we're not worried about selling it. That's for sure. It's, a, it's we had to allocate it right out of the gate. Um, and so, um, uh, but, but we'll just see um, what people like and don't like about the whole thing. So, right. Right. So this is something that is allocated for how, how limited are these? Uh, we'll probably do 12,000 cases this year. Um, and, um, we had hoped that would be enough. Um, but they're already selling, and, uh, uh, it, we'll, we'll just, we'll see how it goes, but we'll probably cap this one at 12,000. 12,000. These are so good. So what, yeah, what are, really what's good. the difference between the blends? I mean, I know there's some flavor differences, but what, how did you, yep. how did you approach the orange team? How did the blue team approach the blue team? What was yep. the, um, yeah, totally. So, you know, Hans and I kind of worked together ahead of time cause we wanted to make sure that we didn't make two blends that tasted pretty similar, <laughs> you know, because right. when you're working autonomously and, and you know, separately, you, you can do that. Um, you know, we know our whiskeys really well and we know where the flavors want to go and what the best flavors are. And, um, we can push our whiskey blends in a lot of directions. Um, and you know, you, even though the whiskey is pretty much made the same way every time and the mash bills, you know, the same, um, they just age very differently. And so when we taste through barrels, you know, which we taste through every single barrel in our inventory, right. um, they're, they're in like one of five different categories, one of five flavor, different flavor categories. And so we know when we do a blend, we blend 20 barrels at a time, um, you know, almost daily. And we know, okay, we need this many of each category, but you right. know, we can push it any direction we want. So, um, you know, Hans, Hans wanted to do one that, that was, you know, fruity and, fruity and you know nice on brown sugar and i wanted more you know i wanted more like at caramel and rye on mine oh, and yeah. so we started you know blending in those directions and you know we're able to sort of steer the guys when they were when we're putting the different blends together sort of steer them where where things made sense you know to go and still have two really unique blends and the blends are you know they're pretty different so they are yeah they're and i, I really absolutely get that on the on the fruitiness and the caramel and the brown sugar i mean there's so much going on on both and uh, again, very limited quantities. It's all about uh, celebrating. And then at whichever one you like best, uh, hopefully people go out, they find two of them, they try them side by side, they just go to this barcode, then they vote on their favorite. Is that what they're? Yeah, yeah. So if you just hit the QR code, it'll take you right to the URL and it'll tell you the whole story. And there's, you know, some pictures and video and everything. And it's just, you know, it's quick, quick hitter stuff that you can watch. And uh, it's pretty cool. You get to see how we made it all. And, tells the story and shows the guys, you know, talking smack and, um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's just a lot of fun. And then, um, right there on the website, you can vote which, which blend you like the best. And, um, you know, if you go to the website and enter your info, you get entered to win, um, swag and, you know, other prizes. So, um, the big giveaway, um, we're doing is, um, a couple of tickets to the Breckers bourbon suite. So we have a suite, um, really awesome suite there at the stadium 
and uh, you get free tickets. Um, and we also have a tailgate before every game. So we've got a pretty tricked out uh, tailgate um, in the parking lot, same spot every wow. time. So you so so as part of the uh, as part of the partnership with the uh, Breckenridge Distillery, the Breckenridge Bourbon, and the um, Denver Broncos, you all are having a special tailgate and a special suite. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. And then we've also got the partnership also included branding out you know a lot of the stadium spaces. So the we're like the featured bourbon in the bars. There's the Bronco Billy, which is a cocktail you can get um, at you know any of the bars in the stadium, and we have a branded out large branded out bar uh we have murals inside and um you know all the all the cool stuff so there's definitely a big presence in there and um you know again it's like it's just a cool collaboration and two two things that just go together so well so it just it just all integrated really easily how does how does you think you think a little sip before or after might help the, the football game of any players is it uh it's been known to give a little energy or to uh, what do you think yeah, maybe uh, I think the um, offensive linemen like to drink a lot, you know. So they're, they're big, uh, they're big whiskey drinkers. That's so I, don't know, I don't know what's going cool on. Thing. Right, well, and, and, and so uh, games. So the, the, you're going to be at the the suite some more yourself. What have you been to any of the, the games yet in the suite? What's uh, what's the experience? Yeah, we just we had one pregame. So they had one home game for the preseason. Yeah. And uh, no, preseason, not pregame. And uh, so we got everything dialed in there. And um, yeah, then um, I mean, I'll, our team will be hosting this. There'll be someone hosting the suite, you know, every game. But um, right. we'll, we'll be, uh, you know, it's, the suite's mainly for um, customers, you know, like um, whiskey buyers and influencers and, um, right. you know, liquor store owners and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's uh, motivation for those guys to sell more Breck. <laughs> absolutely you might even see bbt stop by yeah for sure yeah let us sounds know. like a great experience what a what a what a cool thing to be yeah. the first bourbon to uh cool. be a sponsor uh an official bourbon of an nfl team uh this is these are both delicious both of these are really nice i'm trying i'm trying to decide which i like best i mean there are so many unique things happening and i think yeah. it goes to show the variety um of barrels you all have and i know mm -hmm. you also yep. tap into that in your single barrel program too Yep. Yeah. And it sort of depends on the day. Some days I like the orange better. Some days I like the blue better. And, um, you know, they're just, they're, they're different. So pretty cool. Really delicious. Uh, it's been, has it been, a, I'm trying to remember, I know we've talked to you a number of times on bourbonblog.com, but since you released the rum cast in almost a year or not quite a year since the rum cask uh, was released. Yeah. I think it's been, it's probably been about a year, about a year. Uh, yeah. Great feedback on that everywhere from what I'm seeing. I mean, it is something so delicious. Um, what's what's what how's it been after this this year? After yeah, this year? it's it's actually it's been so good that we're actually adding a new still so we can make more rum. Um, wow, because we have to, rum so, yeah, so you know, we make the we age it in the in our in our own rum barrels or Colorado rum and um it's um <laughs> we, we sort of ran out <laughs> of barrels so we're having to make more rum you know it's sort of like you know making more sherry so you can have better scotch right it's uh same deal so we're, we're having making more runs rum so we're adding in a, a stripping still just for rum um wow. so we can lay down more rum and um yeah that one was allocated too and it sold out like just like that it was gone um, so just Making I was afraid of that. More I was, af oh, I was wow. afraid it would be that popular, and um, um, and it even, you know. So I padded the sort of the all the um, whatever infrastructure, <laughs> you know, that went into right. that, and uh, but it, yeah, it just it sells out instantly. We'll release a couple thousand cases, and they're just gone. So, um, so yeah, people are having a hard time finding it some places. Yeah, it's. I mean, we've managed to keep up, but it's. We're getting down to crunch time um, here, and so we'll be getting that stripping still in um, here in the next few months, and then that'll allow us to catch up. Very nice. No, it's delicious. It's so good on its own. Uh, throw a cube in. I mean, it kind of has this instant tiki feel without being over sweet. Great balance of the whiskey. That nice. Um, that cornbread note we always talk about, and and also just this wonderful luscious rum. Um, how do you like it? Are there any cocktails you put it in, or do you do you mix it with anything? 
Well, so, I mean, that I think that's the cool thing about the rum cast is there's so much flavor, right? Because yeah. um, we're putting it in a spiced rum barrel, so it's picking up a lot of the holiday spice and all those things from our spiced rum. And um, it's almost like um, a waste to put it in a cocktail, you know, I right. mean, because it's so complex by itself. Yes. And so for me, like, that's a sipper. Um, oh, yeah around a campfire or opera ski or whatever, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, in the mood or you're needing to, uh, low carb, you're in the low carb world and, um, you know, so you can drink whiskey cause there's no carbs in it. And so that has, you know, essentially no carbs in it. And, um, it's nice cause you can have like a complex whiskey. Right. It tastes like you, it tastes like you kind of made a cocktail in a way. Um, but man, tonight I'm just the orange blend tonight for me is just that long the orange spice. blends. The one you're going for that long spicy finish. I uh, no, it's, uh, you did a great job with that orange blend. You really did. And I like the whole idea of the whisk diet. I think it's, um, I think that what you're recommending there is quite good. Yeah. Uh, Mom's this, rum cast, it. <laughs> <laughs> this rum cast is amazing. I'm seeing, uh, Frank's watching. He's forgotten about it. Chad, thank you very much. A lot of great people watching, share this, like this video. Uh, I'll also briefly tell you, it was just about a year ago, uh, and I see our buddy uh, Chad Bates there from uh, Janice Coffee Roasters watching of uh, Wyoming. He came to uh, Breckenridge oh, cool. and got a, yeah. a barrel of bourbon, and we and we branded a bourbon blog coffee. So if you are a fan of coffee, I want to stick this link up here. If you're a fan of both coffee and bourbon, it's really been our uh, honor and pleasure to partner with you guys, Brian, with this bourbon blog coffee. Bourbonblog.com forward slash coffee. We took some uh, coffee beans and aged them in a used Breck barrel, and it's just, it's such delicious stuff. So that's where you can find it if you like both yeah. bourbon and coffee. And then you can just add some more extra bourbon to your coffee if you want to. <laughs> this is like non alcoholic and, and really good. Um, all these delicious, uh, the, the sh sherry cask, the pork cask. I mean, there's so, your cask finishes are so beautiful. Uh, what else? What else? Obviously, this is a, a big story right here but yeah. what else is in the works that you're able to um that you're able to share yeah but you know big big project um getting ready to release um let's see we're in september so i think this is coming out um next month i believe uh we've done a collaboration with breckenridge brewery um and that's a pretty cool story so um we um initially uh loved this beer that they had um and you know we were able we just knew that it was it was a a magic sort of pairing so they um they were very interested in uh doing a barrel finish on a beer okay. um, which they did and um it was um it was just exceptionally good and then as soon as they dumped the barrel we had the barrels within like 12 minutes and we filled them with with breck bourbon and um you know that was already matured and aged and so we did a barrel finish in there and it was it was a pretty long finish i have to ask hans but i think it was like a year and a half or something like oh, that wow. in, in their barrels and uh, that was the sexy motor oil release that we did right and um that that whiskey sold out and like you know it was like just a line out the door until it was gone and so we you know, wanted to go bigger on that. And, um, and so we did. Um, so it's very similar to the sexy motor oil, not exactly the same, but it's called buddy pass. And, uh, so we did a, you know, a lot of beer and a lot of whiskey barrels and, um, you've got to kind of, you've got to get going with it and, and, uh, to get the, you know, the, the finish is timed right. And then rele to release at the same time. So we're releasing the beer and the bourbon at the same time. So they'll wow. have, um, and you know, so they'll be in stores together. They'll be like stacked up together. So you can get, you can actually try the beer that, uh, that it was finished in the bourbon cask and then try the whiskey that then was, you know, finished in that beer barrel. And then, yeah, it's called buddy pass. So big wow. release coming up here this fall. Um, that's mainly Colorado, uh, again, uh, um, on this initial round and then, um, but we're, we're still going. And then we're we're even getting then we're giving those back and getting other ones back and so we're we're like seeing what happens after so this is going to be going on for years several times <laughs> the releases will keep getting bigger and they'll be in you know in more markets and 
but again, you know, allocated product, but, um, oh my God, super awesome. Did we get you a sexy motor oil? Did you get one of I those? I don't think I've tried it yet. I, I can't okay. wait to try oh, it. Dude. It's, I know, I, I know we, we heard about it and it sounds really amazing. This particular one, the beer and the bourbon, is it, what kind of beer is it that you finished it? It was, um, it was an Imperial stout, I believe. Oh, wow. A stout. And yeah. then the stout. So the stout, held, so it was your whiskey barrel, mm -hmm. got dumped at Breckenridge, went down to Breckenridge Brewery, mm -hmm. and then held the stout and then came back. That's right. Yeah, and then aging. spent a year and a half. Wow. Aging yeah. in the, 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 the bourbon was aging in the beer barrel. That's right. For a year and a half. Amazing, buddy. And, and again, it'll be released at the same time yep. in Colorado. What month will that be? You think it'll I think it's be? next month. I think it's like the next end of next month. month. October. That's that yeah. sounds if not it's early it, November, but and then we're gonna incredible. try to get it going. We're gonna get this try to get the cycle going. We'll release it around like Father's Day and then around the holidays each year. Nice. That's and then we do have more sexy motor oil coming too. Oh, so good. we're yeah. gonna do like a super sexy motor oil, which is gonna be like uh you, you know, after the barrels have gone back and forth a couple of times. It's and, gotten and, smoother uh, and sexier, right? Yeah, it's, I think there's going to be like a super sexy. We're shooting for like Valentine's Day uh, for that first release of next year. Nice, that's that's so cool. And you're and you're literally just going just down. I mean, you're just going across town with these, right? Yeah, initially we did. Um, so they don't make enough beer in um, in Breckenridge. Yeah, in Breck. So they have the big brewery in Denver. Den so Denver. Okay. It's it. yeah. So, so we're Denver. now it's you know you get a. Um, we don't want to lose any of the essence of the beer and we don't want any, you know, secondary fermentation or anything to happen. So right. it's literally like as soon as the barrels are dumped, the bungs pounded in and they go on a refrigerated truck and come immediately here. And we're sitting there ready. The minute they come, we fill them and then roll them out. Um, and then, you know, then they're good. Then they got to sit for a couple of years, but. Excellent. No, that's that sounds so fun. So be watching for the Buddy Pass with Breckenridge Brewery. Uh, I love their beer, and I'm obviously a big fan of the Breckenridge Distillery. That's coming this fall. Any uh, any events that you all are a part of or looking forward to in Colorado? Anything? Uh, oh man, any? that's a lich question. There, you know, it's like we we have always done so many events, um, and you know, it's it's nonstop. I mean, it's you know between lit, lich and Billy. Um, yeah. there, you know, and a couple other, uh, team members with them, it's events, events, events. So yeah, we're always doing something. And if there's something cool going on in Denver or Colorado and there could potentially be bourbon involved, we're there. <laughs> yes. You guys, Usually. you guys have done such a great job building it. And, and what a cool thing that, uh, now, uh, you, you're the, again, the official bourbon of the Denver Broncos and in Colorado, be looking for these, they are allocated. Grab a bottle of each. Try them uh, next to each other. These are these are at the same proof, aren't they? They're both eighty six mm -hmm. proof, uh, just mm -hmm. as your. And of course, we love the original as well. Uh, this is really a nice way to change it up. Nice gift to get for a Denver Broncos fan. And then, of course, um, the rum cask. I'm also a big fan of the sherry cask. Uh, amazing stuff uh, that goes so well with the cigar and so many other things. They're just does, no yeah. end of good pairings. Such yeah. great stuff. Um, yeah. And, you know, I just always tell people it's, you know, what's unique about, um, about what we do is you can, you can, you know, come visit and we're a destination distillery. We take hospitality seriously and, um, you gotta, you know, if you want to eat or, um, uh, you know, do more extensive experiences, it's, it's wide open. You just got to plan for it. You can't show up. <laughs> you gotta just get a book it, get a reservation. And, um, you know, we've, uh, we opened the Founders Lab this year, which I don't believe you've got into yet, but uh, Founders Lab is one of our old barrel rooms is we've turned into um, uh, a high-end consumer experience. So you can do a upscale flight if you want for not much money, and you can be led through a tasting. You can do all whiskeys. You can pick from several different flights of whiskeys. You can taste through our other spirits as well. Um, and you, you'll, you know, you'll be led through and you'll drink it out of a glass, not a tasting cup. And, um, we offer, uh, food pairings with those. So you can do a flight of spirits with, uh, food. 
Uh, we also do spirits and chocolate pairings, which are really awesome. They've been oh, curated wow. very carefully and they're amazing. Um, and you can also do the whiskey blending lab. So if you sign up, you can come in and, um, uh, you can actually blend your own whiskey. So we'll take you through, it's two hours. We'll take you through the process. You'll taste through all the whiskeys and the different flavor profiles that we were talking about before in those different categories, you know, and then, um, you make your own blend and, um, and then you bottle it and you take it home, wax dip it. And, uh, it's got your own, your name on it and everything else is pretty cool. Um, so that's, so that's stuff we were checking there. out and, you know, those things are, um, you know, very popular. So you just, you just got to kind of plan ahead a little bit, but, um, it's, they've been a huge hit and a lot of fun. So. Cool. Cool. Congrats on uh, that at all the ways you've grown the, uh, distillery experiences, everything you're doing there. And, uh, hopefully we'll see you real soon, Brian. These are both delicious. I'm the verdict for me is still out, but I can, I can see so much great, um, uh, flavor profiles on, on both of these. Uh, and then no doubt, as you said, next year, it'll be, you'll have two other new blends. You'll do this every mm -hmm. year with the Broncos. Yep. Yep. Definitely. At least for the next three years. Nice. That'll be, that'll be yeah, fun that'll to be watch it on phone. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, Brian, thanks so much for joining us live from Colorado here on bourbon blog and, uh, uh, our best to Lich, Jesse, all the team there, Billy, everybody. And, uh, hopefully we see you real soon. Sounds good, man. Cheers, Brian. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Make sure you like and share this video. Thanks, man. Yep.